<laughs> Happy Hello. Wednesday. We are live at five. Hello, people. Hump day. Hump day. We have a special guest today. We do. Ooh, we've got lighting changes. We have Katie Rose Clark here from Allegiance. Hooray. Hello, everyone. Hello. Come in. I like your name, Adina, is my person. Hey, Imogen's wearing well, a hat today, you guys. It's not actually cold in here. It is cold. Speaking mm. of Adina, Frozen yes. is coming to Broadway. We knew Frozen was coming to Broadway. I mean, Adina's not, co Adina Adina Adina's not, is not coming to Frozen to Broadway. But, but, but Frozen is actually coming to Broadway in 2018. Yes, spring 2018. We knew, we'd already sort of heard that Alex Timbers might direct, but he's officially on board for the project. Um, they've gone for set and costume designer Bob Crowley. Yes. Um, and that's going to be... I mean, that's the key job almost, how it's going to oh, look. Oh, yeah. You can see his work right now yeah. on An American in Paris. So, Very talented yeah. gentleman. Um, and lighting design by Natasha Katz, who's a great Broadway favourite. So we're obviously all looking to that. Other big news that happened in the past 24 hours since the last Live at Five, Aaron Sorkin, and it would take somebody of this calibre to actually have the guts to do this, is going to adapt Harper Lee's To Kill a, Bo to Kill a Mockingbird for Broadway. Can you imagine the casting of Atticus Finch? I mean, what? Uh, directed by Bartlett Sher, of course, to The King and I. Yes. Many others. Um, Feather on the Roof. He uh, is going to bow in the 2017 to 18 season. So at the moment, 2017 18 season is looking very strong. Yeah. Very we strong. Indeed. We should just stick around. Yeah, we should. We should just <laughs> stick around. Hopefully, I'll keep my job. Um, yeah, moving on. Uh, it was the last vlog has just been put up for Hard Rock Life, Alex Brightman. Although he said maybe there'll be more. You never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. uh, and Megan Hilty, her show People is now up. Yep, that's a fun one. Watch Have a look it. at that on the site. Watch it. Forrest Whitaker was on the Today Show earlier today, um, which we did a little video of, talking about how daunting it was to make his Broadway debut. Because he may Huey. have won an Oscar, but he's never been on Broadway before. Broadway's hard, you guys. It is. It is hard. Uh, and then Odds and Ends is about to go up. It has been led today by the news that there's going to be an eighth Harry Potter book. Well, sort of. Okay, but you need to explain that. Okay. That's too exciting. So Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is the play that is set 19 years after the books. It's in happening in London this summer. Um, tickets are very hard to come by. So they have, they're going to be releasing the play, the script of the show. So it's not another novel. It's the script no. of the play. But, but they're it's gonna be still doing, exciting. They're gonna be doing it carry it around in your bag. And they're gonna be doing it twice. They're gonna be releasing the rehearsal script and then the final version. Because of oh, course, as cool. we all know, shows change completely during previews. Of course they do. So it that's interesting. And that you'll be able to not only buy it, but also Pottermore, which is a fan website, they'll be releasing it ebook wise. So you'll be able to get it immediately. Hmm. Take that to the stage door, people. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, uh, there's going to be a pilot. Stephen Boyer, oh, who was in Boyer. Hand to God, has been uh, tapped for an NBC pilot called The Trail. Tony nominee. Yeah. Also, uh, Tracy Letts of Superior Donuts, which was on Broadway a few years ago, is also going to be turned into a TV pilot, which is interesting. Now I want a donut. All right, you, you better go get one in your hat. Yeah, donut. <laughs> um, and Ruthie Ann Miles has just wrapped on The Americans, and that series will premiere in March. So all very exciting. Great. I'm right, leaving away. now. Thank you. Bye. Should I do one of these things? I don't know how to do this. Paul always does the sound the machine. The I'm not doing it. Come here, Katie Rose Clark. Hello. Hello, you guys. It's Katie Rose Clark. Hi, guys. Of Allegiance. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's so excited that you're oh here. Oh, my gosh. So many comments. Katie, Katie. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi. Hey. Oh my. You're in your last week of Allegiance. Hi from Texas. Hello. We have people from Utah excited to see you. Yeah. We love you. I love you too. Mm -hmm. Love you. Oh my god. You're so beautiful. Yeah, that's so great. This is a It's just like a compliment. I feel then, great about myself. Thank you guys. They, know. they all love you. Look at this. They have a lot of questions. San Antonio. Okay, you're Texas peeps. Oh my yeah, those are my people. Canada. So can we talk about Allegiance for a second? Yes, please. This is a really special show. Oh, thank you. This is a show that really means a lot to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And it's also, obviously you are on Broadway in The Wicked. That's why you're all freaking out about your wonderful <laughs> Glinda, people are saying. Oh, thank you. And you're in The Light and the Piazza. But this is the first time you originated a role on Broadway. Yes, How exactly. did that feel for you? Oh my god. That was a dream come true. Very excited. Uh, definitely a goal that I had set for myself when I moved to New York, 10 years ago, actually. Um, and so I couldn't, I couldn't imagine a better show to be a part of, a better cast to be a part of. So I'm totally thrilled, still thrilled, still feel just 
uh, humbled and grateful. So now everybody says they love their cast and we're a family, but I really think that's true <laughs> at Allegiance. Really it actually do. is. Yeah, we actually love each other. So. It's actually like real. Yeah. <laughs> so people are, are are talking about the light in the piazza, oh. which was something that you did. You made your Broadway debut. I did. And you replaced Kelly O'Hara's Clara. Mm -hmm. And now they're gonna have a tenth anniversary reunion. Oh Can you believe God. it? I can't wait. I'm gonna, gonna go. Oh God, you I'm gonna bring fan some girl. tissues. Please, I will. Be, yes, I'll be a <laughs> weeping mess. So if y'all see me at that concert, just you know, give me a little pat on the back and say <laughs> you're you're okay. Okay, people are saying our volume is low, so we will be louder. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Sorry, you guys. We will project. We have to talk about your show at 54 Below, Feinstein's 54 Below, yes, Feinstein's on March 11th. Yes, I'm very excited. Yeah, March 11th at 9.30 p.m. Uh, what are you going to sing? Oh my gosh. I A little actually, popular, maybe? Not. I don't know. We'll see. You guys mm. have to come and find out. I actually uh, did a solo show there about two years ago and um, totally enjoyed it and just haven't had an opportunity to get back. And so this time I, I decided to invite some of my buddies to this come is with a, me. This is a Periscope exclusive, this you guys. This is an exclusive. Go ahead, tell Hot us Hot off the, the news. presses, nobody knows this yet, even my own family. I haven't even told my mom, who I tell her everything. Maybe she's watching, hi mom. Hi mom. Uh, Lindsay Mendez and Derek Klenna will be joining me for a few songs at my 54 Below concert on March 11th. So if you want to see the Klendez with the Katie Rose, come out. I mean, out. come on. It's yeah. a Fly Girl reunion. It's a Fly Girl reunion, sure. Fiero, Alphaba, and Glinda are all going to be at 54 Below. Yeah. You can just like, sit there and have a drink and watch them. Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. People are excited about that. Yay. Oh, good. Yeah. There's a lot of yeses for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeses with extra S's. Those are those are really good S's. Yeses, yeses with an A. Yes. <laughs> yes. So people keep on telling you that we love you, we love you, we love you. Uh -huh. Thank We're you using guys. our inside voices. We are? I'm um, so sorry, yeah. guys. We love you too. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, so I know that Allegiance is winding down and that's very sad for mm -hmm. the big Allegiance family. How's that, how's that playing itself out at, at the theater? You know, I think generally the feeling at the theater is that we are, we feel in our hearts that, you know, and in our minds, it's a, it's a huge success. We're, we're, we're hugely thankful that the story's been told and um, it's important. It's an important story and it's unfortunately very relevant. Uh, so I think that the fact that we played on Broadway for the amount of time that we did has has just been a blessing, um, and and we're grateful for that. And and I don't know what the life after Broadway is going to be, but um, it's a story that's been told. And I just want okay, we don't usually get political here in Periscope World, oh, uh -oh. but is it true, true or false, mm -hmm. that George Takei has set aside a, a seat for Donald Trump? True. Every day. Donald Trump, I know <laughs> you're Donald watching. Donald has his own state at Allegiance. Mr. Trump, I know you're watching this because he's my biggest fan. Uh, we, You've been invited every day to the show, and so, yeah, we do. We actually have a house seat set out for him every night uh, with a That's sign. kind of amazing. I oh. mean, it, it's one thing to say, but it's another thing to actually set it aside. I time. mean, really. Doesn't yeah. have that many more performances to come to. Huge, yeah, we're done, but, you know, it was. I, th I think it was a huge statement, and I think it was an important statement, and, uh, you know, so, so we made and it. And leave it to George Takei. Uh, the classiest he's, he's man in show business. The class, you guys, he's the classiest man in show business and also the most generous spirit. He's just a beautiful human. And he's human. hilarious. And he's hilarious in the show, you guys. He's just, what's the funniest thing he said? Hmm. Oh my gosh. Everything. He, how he's about so Mr. Trump, witty. here's a house seat. Adam. Yeah, right. how, about, how about every day we're going to hold a house seat for Donald Trump? So what are your plans after Allegiance that people want to know? Well, I will be focused on the 54 Below show. Yeah. Uh, Right now, that's about it. Back to the drawing board. Back to the auditioning. So, that's how it works, you guys. Yeah, no guarantees, you guys. <laughs> okay, someone has has told us like six times now that she and her friend Lydia met because of you, and they love you. <gasps> oh, that's great. It's nice to because, bring people together. Because of you and Lindsay, we love you. Oh, oh Lindsay is like she's my she's my girl. Broadway bestie. Oh, that's great. Bringing people together. What's your favorite show you've ever done? People are asking. Oh my gosh. I have to say, and it's not because I'm in it right now, but the Allegiance has such a special place in my heart. And it was uh, such a, an exciting thing to put my stamp on it, to put my personality into it. And uh, so, so for that reason, I've really enjoyed it. And also, I know it's cliche, but we are family, we love each other, and... It's a great cast. Yeah, it's, it's been really special. People want to know about your character a little bit, so tell us about Nurse Hannah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Nurse Hannah, she is from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, she comes 
into the internment camp kind of uh, n not her first choice of where she would be uh, stationed in the army as a nurse. And um, while there, she's just kind of challenged in her thinking and ends up falling in love and um, grows a lot as a woman, mm -hmm. kind of from a, a young girl to a, a pretty strong woman who is able to, to stand up for what she believes in. Uh, of course, people want to know about Leia Salonga. Oh my God, Leia Salonga. That, she's amazing. She's a real thing, huh? You guys, the first cast album I ever listened to was Miss Saigon, and I was wow. one of those things where you know you're like sitting in your room and just going through the little, in, do they have that anymore? It's so like digital now, but the little booklet, but it has all the lyrics, and you're listening to the album, and I was saying that whole thing. My first voice recital, I sang, um, what's the song she sings before? Uh, Help us out, people. Was the song she sings at the end of the show? I mean, you know what it is. It was a big. Anyway, she's amazing. So I was, I was really excited to meet her and work with her, and it has been, just I give my life for you. Thank you. I need now. Thank you so much. Yeah, I give my life. For you. Yeah, I sang that at my first voice recital. Everybody did you like, tell her that? <laughs> I, I'm sure somebody. She's did. probably watching right now. Yeah. She's probably watching. No. Uh, yeah, we're actually all going to see Disaster tonight, you guys. We're really excited. Can't, I'm seeing it tomorrow. I'm very excited. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. our own Allegiance lady, Catherine Ricafort, she's in it, in the, in the Disaster class. So Awesome. Yeah, so we're going to go watch her. So everyone's asking about the Wicked, because once you're in Wicked, you have fans for life. <laughs> so people want to know some... What was it like going up in the bubble for the first time? Oh my gosh. See, this that's is... A, that's an exclusive club of people that get up to go up in the bubble. Yeah. Oh, um, I was your first Glinda. See, you know, that those mm. things never get old to be told that I was people's first Glinda and and, uh, and and all the things that are popping up on the screen. Uh, I, the bubble is, was scary. I was actually... I'm not a huge fan of heights. <laughs> Uh, the head carpenter, I was on tour first, so when the the head carpenter ended up becoming one of my good friends, actually, and came to my wedding, and we're still close friends. That's nice. So when I first went up into the bubble, I told him that I, I was not really a fan of the idea. <laughs> so they put me in, you know, they lower it all the way down to the stage. I step in, they, they like raise it a few feet until I'm comfy, and then they raise it a few feet more. It's like a starter bubble. Yeah, it was yeah. a starter bubble. <laughs> yeah, it was like train wheels on the bubble. <laughs> So that you do it slowly, you do it incrementally. I did. I mean, I'm sure some girls thought it was just fun and was were able to do it. I, it took me a minute. That's scary. Totally. Because you're not hard, you're not locked in there. Uh, we are. Oh, you in are. In a certain way, oh, yeah. 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 In a certain way. <laughs> you can't know about that. People yeah. want to know what show you want to be in that you've never been in. Oh my gosh. That's a hard one. That is such a hard one. You know, we get asked that a lot. I, I any any show that comes along is such a, a gift, and that sounds real cheesy, but it's so true. It's it's just, you know, any opportunity that I have to put my stamp, to put my flavor on a character or on a story is is just a gift. So I really, I, I don't think I could design the next thing or the, or I don't have designs on a show. Just that someone I has to do. write something new. That Someone's, would be ideal. Yeah, I'd love to originate again. That was just special. People want to know if you met Lindsay Mendez before Wicked mm -hmm. or did you meet during Wicked? Lindsay and I did meet before Wicked. We met doing a reading of actually it was Love's Labor's Lost uh, at the pub. It was a reading version of it before it ever went to the uh, Shakespeare in the Park. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, with so you already had a little connection everybody. before you were on mm -hmm. stage together. Yeah, that was uh, that was I was in Wicked at the time actually. Oh my gosh, I did the show for a long time. Um, but yeah, we we met actually doing that. And when she was joining the show, when she was joining Wicked and knew that I was doing it, she emailed me. And um, and did you have like a little Glinda pre Wicked chat, pre Wicked coffee? We had a pre Wicked email exchange, and then when, it was just so easy with her. It was just oh, one of those yeah. things She's where so it was nice. like, yeah, we just were immediately friends. Actually, you know, it just it was just there was chemistry, which you know probably. All right, people are asking about your dog. I saw your dog romping in the snow on Instagram. Oh yeah, what's your dog's name? Samson. <laughs> Samson. It's yeah. like a white fluffy dog. It's yeah. a Glinda dog, basically. He's a Glinda dog. I got him on uh, tour when I was on tour with Wicked in North Carolina, and uh, yeah, he's a he's a big bundle of just fluff. <laughs> It's just a little cloud on a leash, you guys. He's great. He's great. He's just, he's he. You know, it took me a while. He's my first dog, so I had to figure out how to train and do all those things, and you know. But he's really well behaved. He's a good guy. Now, here's a question we get a lot, mm -hmm. which is, do you have advice for aspiring actors? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, I always say this to people: is just you know, really, uh, depending on where you are in your 
what, how old you are and where you are in life. It's you study everything. You know, a lot of the, a lot of those kinds of questions come from people going to um, college. Yeah. So I always say study everything. I love history. I loved my history professor in college. My roommate and I, um, we would. I mean, if, if she was teaching a course that we were supposed to take, we would go and, and, and take her course. But anyway, um, study everything and, and really uh, don't limit yourself to certain genres or certain, mm -hmm. I mean, even if it's theater, be open, be open to everything about theater. Um, and, and so, and study everything. I really think it's Good important advice. to be well-rounded. That makes so much sense. Yeah, yeah, people just keep, don't be no make your path too narrow. Yeah, don't don't get singularly focused on anything or one show or one path. Okay, well this is amazing. <laughs> we adore you. Yay. I don't really understand the, this question about pizza. pizza rolls. People have weird questions. Pizza so rolls. They just want you to. What's, what's your favorite food? Oh my god, pizza! It's like I love it too much, probably a little bit too much. But how much is too much? <laughs> Happy belated pizza day, by the way. Oh, yes. It was pizza day, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. These are all made up things. This I, it is totally. Before. It's made up for social media. I mean, that was not a thing before. I don't remember that being a thing before. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. and people, want, oh, people keep on asking about Texas. We have a true yeah. Texan with us. I am a true Texan. Oh, they don't sound native very Texan. Texan. Oh, thank you for that. Is that good? Well, I, I had a hard no, time getting good, rid of my sound, accent. You sound very... Um, I don't know, from anywhere. I'm not sure where. Thank you. Nondescript. That's great. Nondescript. Well, yeah, howdy. Yeah, no, I'm from but Texas. But do you go I'm back to Texas? From Texas. And, yeah, both of my... the troops over there? <laughs> well, yeah, my family is all still there. My husband's family is actually all still there. So we go home to Texas quite a bit, probably a couple times a year. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay, one last question. Oh, sure. so many more questions. Everyone wants questions? to know about every alphabet. I know. Your funniest onstage mishap. My funniest onstage mishap, oh my god, well, I always tell this story, and y'all probably heard it, but I'll tell it again. But I was, <laughs> it was on tour, you know, that first change out of the Glinda wig is a really fast change, so you just get, like, a couple of quick pins, and then, you know, it's a quick change. You have to change your wig, like, really quickly. So anyway, uh, and you're in the bubble, and you have the, Glind the, you know, the bubble wig on, which is the curly one. And it's just got you know, the, the two one. quick escape pins, is what they call them, and through the crown and through the wig and holding onto your pin curls. And there's that moment, which you all know, where you're about to go back up and go back up and all, leave all the Aussians away and, the, and someone calls you and so you stop the bubble and then you have them lower it down. You all know this moment. Yes, we all know this moment. Well, I stopped, I looked up and boom, wig, crown, everything fell all the way to the ground. And I was just there bald and just like a wig cap with my bubble dress. And you know, like stage makeup, you know, the lashes and everything. I look like a drag queen with no wig on. I mean, it was like all the things. And I I just had a right and so, I'm so stuck in the Aussie bubble. <laughs> yes, uh, an Aussie named Blake <laughs> picked up my wig. wig, picked up my wig and you know, I got off, you know, the thing lowers down and you have wow. to step out and I just <laughs> try to get it back on there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know what? God bless Blake. Yep. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Blake. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't, maybe you've told it before, but I have not heard it. Oh my God. And now I'm going to tell it to it everyone is from everyone. Because it was the kind of thing that wasn't really funny. It was like everything inside you just drops to the floor. Like it's And the you can't worst go feeling. anywhere. No, you're stuck in the air. And the whole audience, and yes. Did you, like, get your wand, like, to try and get it? <laughs> oh, my God. Float back up. No, everyone was horrified. I did not recover. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole audience, collectively, was just big, like, one big, <gasps> gasp. <laughs> it was awful. Awful, awful, awful. It was just Did bad. the bubble move a little more quickly that night? Do, no, you guys, no. It just came down at its normal pace, and everybody's like, it felt like I was in there for a year. Amazing. Anyway. <laughs> well, thank you for coming by and telling us that story. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh, thanks for having me. This is my first time at Live at Five. Yes, but not your last. Oh, You thanks. guys, go see Katie Rose Clark in Allegiance, and then go to Feinstein's studio, what yeah. is it, 54 Below, come on March 11th. Come hang out with me. all of those wicked people sing to you. Yeah, how cool is that? All right, love you guys. Bye. Bye. Yep. Yeah.